Hello, and welcome to a new Let's Play of Steins Gate. I've heard nothing but good about this series as a whole. It's supposed to be like a time travel sort of deal, and I, I like those kind of things. So, uh, yeah, with that in mind, let's get started. Everything is coincidence. But even coincidence is part of fate's design. Coincidence. I'm not losing it. I'm perfectly sane. What I speak now is absolute truth, not some childish fantasy. Uh-huh. Oh shit. Is this gonna have like some time paradox stuff? Oh. Oh. うん。人は自分で思っている以上に愚鈍な生き物なんだよ。普段の生活の中に埋もれている何気ないことなど気にも留めないし。力を失っても person? Well, that was quite the, uh, intro sequence, um, oh. Yugen. え、超物物こそ最も愚かであるの。歴史から読み取れ。海に行ける魚は陸の世界を知らない。彼らが英知を持てばそれもまた滅びる。人間が光の速さを超えるのに魚たちが陸で生活を始めるよりも滑稽。
my contact is wise to maintain silence. The whole area could be bugged. Yeah, this is the story. The problem is, I'll send No, I was just talking to someone. Everything's fine. I'm about to infiltrate the assembly hall. Sorry if my voice isn't as good as the voice actors then. By no means a professional. Still no reply. Looks like they just want my report. It's too dangerous to waste time talking here anyway. Yeah, Dr. Nakabachi got the jump on us. But I'll make sure he tells us everything. What? The organization is already on the move? It's red. Can I, can I interact with red? No? <laughs> I open my eyes wide to match my shocked tone. Ooh. You could see my face, my eyes are open pretty wide right now. The girl turns toward me in surprise. So sorry. My eyes can only go so quiet. Sorry if that spooked you and your freakish anime eyes. <clears throat> I sigh, shaking my head as I rub my temples. I see, so that's the choice of Stein's gate. El Sai Kongru. Excuse me? I speak the parting words, then pop my cell phone. I didn't hear anybody on the other side, what's up with that? <laughs> Am I sort of insane or something? No, I mean, I, I was just joking about talking on the phone in public, just to look like you're actually doing something before, but... That might actually be happening. Ugh. Steins Gate. Some know it as fate, to others, it's the will of God. Hmm. You can count on one hand the people in this world. Oh shit, hold on. You can count on one hand the people in this world aware of its true nature. So I didn't mess that up. It just threw me off. In any case, we should begin the infiltration. I advanced toward Radikan, which is just across the street from the train station. Of course, this is enemy territory. I can't just stride through the front door like an average person. I gotta waltz in like some sort of maniac. I bypass the elevators and escalators and head to the 8th floor by the stairwell. But I only make it to the 7th floor before I have to stop and rest. Come on, man. Stairs aren't too difficult. You, you could go up 7 flights, what is that? Probably. 70 feet, 15 stairs, uh, 15, uh, 105 stairs maybe? It's not too bad. Who was that on the phone? I I'm sorry, Mayuri. I, I can't do your voice. My voice does not go that high. And I'm not willing to make an ass of myself trying to do it. The girl. Shiina Mayuri immediately resumes our conversation. She followed me all the way here, and she isn't even short of breath. Cause she's not an unfit fuck like you. Or me, I don't know. <clears throat> I, on the other hand, am gasping for air with my hands on my knees. <laughs> Who would have thought an eight-story building would be so tall? Well, uh, pretty tall. You know, that there are eight stories. It's not something you want to fall off of. I turn to Mayori, wiping the sweat off my brow. That's a little close. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. Oh my. Rintaro. Jeez. Oh wow. Thanks, Okarin. Mayuri smiles, happily, and doesn't pry any further. 
As always, she is quick to understand my position. You're, can you, like, back up a few feet? You're freaking me out a bit. Monitor's a little big, and your face is pretty close to mine. It's sort of weird. Oh. We've known each other since we were both little. Childhood friend status? Mayuri is 17, two years younger than me, so she's more like a little sister than typical childhood friend. Game, how'd you know I'm 19? How? How'd you do this? It's the webcam, isn't it? I gotta cover it up. I've been looking out for her as long as I could remember. I used to hope that Mayuri might become the key to Stein's Gate, but now I've reconsidered. I don't want that terrible fate for her. She should live a normal life. That is my present wish. That's quite the zoom. Oh, lecture hall? Assembly hall. We continue to the eighth floor and enter the assembly hall. In front of us stands a cheap looking stage with a podium and a sign reading Dr. Nakabachi's Time Machine Press Conference. That's what that says, huh? Hi again. Okarin, Okarin. Can you, like, again, back up? About three feet or so? You're a little close. Mayuri insists on calling me Okarin, but it is neither my real name nor my code name. It's just one of those annoying nicknames people use. Fair enough. Fair enough. Mayuri. How many times do I have to tell you? Don't call me Okarin. Okay. Huh? But I've always called you that. <laughs> that was an impressive little bit of voice acting there. That English mad scientist. <laughs> that was then. I have since become Uyoin Kyoma. You're just Kyoma? Okay, I, I can't do the double O, double O, I, N part. It's, uh, it throws me off. The insane mad scientist hunted by secret organizations the world over. Mwahaha. But that's too hard to remember. Yeah, I'm sorry your eyes went a little wide at that. Oh jeez, I've just noticed your eyes are... Like... I don't know. The eyes, the eyes are weird, aren't they? Like... Huh, they're so swirly. Oh, got a new tip. In any case, Kyoma is my true name. Okay. <laughs> Besides, it doesn't even sound like Okabe Rintaro. You're weird. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't do the cute little laugh either. Cease your foolish laughter. <laughs> yeah, you tell her. <laughs> Kabe Rintaro may be my real name, but I have rejected it, for it is stupid. And so I also hate the derivative of Okarin. <laughs> Come on, it sounds like that elf boy's blue pipe thing. Shout out to the Ocarina of Time. Jeez. Sweet reference, though. I hope there's more references. <laughs> so, Okarin, can I ask you something? Sure. In one ear and out the other. Tell us then go, both then go. <laughs> She's been calling me that for five years now, so maybe it's time to give up. What are we doing here? 
Well, we're probably at the uh, lecture hall to uh, well, <coughs> assembly hall to hear about this time machine thing I'm gonna do. Wait, you followed me here without knowing why? Uh. Yep. <laughs> Little life advice, don't follow people without knowing where they plan on going. You could end up in like some weird back alley with them and I wouldn't suggest that. It's not a good time. She nods without dropping her smile. We're here for Dr. Nakabachi's press conference. We're standing in the assembly hall on the 8th floor of Radikan. It is here that the conference will be held. Thank you for <laughs> clearing that up. Dr. Nakabachi is an inventor. He appears on TV from time to time and has a few parents. <laughs> parents? That would be a very different sentence. And has a few patents under his belt. But mostly he is treated as a curiosity. Press conference. Oh. But where are the reporters? Mayuri's right. I scanned the entire hall, but there's no one who looks like a reputable reporter or cameraman. In fact, there's nobody here at all. There are only about ten of us standing in the hall, including me. Are they all standing behind me? Does nobody want one of those comfortable chairs? Those chairs that look like some wrestler would use them as a weapon? Considering Nakabachi's moderate media presence and the fact that he claims to have invented a time machine, I would have expected more. Could this be the organization working its twisted influence? I twist my lips into a sneer. I thought that Nakabachi was more like me, a scientist fighting to overthrow the organization. Maybe we'll find out who the organization is, because right now, I don't know. It's just the man. You gotta, you gotta fight him, you know? But this press conference suggests other motives at work. Our enemies won't miss this chance. I'd prefer not to get wrapped up in his mess. Nevertheless, I'm interested in what he has to say. That's why I'm here. Blowing an afternoon of my precious summer holiday. Yeah, you do that. That actually wouldn't be a bad way to spend, you know, a day. Just hearing about some guy in his time machine. You know, as ludicrous as it sounds, it could actually be a thing. You know? Mayuri ponders my utterance for a while before finally turning her head. You wrapped something? Is it his birthday too? <laughs> hmm. So it's my birthday or her birthday or. I let out a sigh. Mayuri is known not to, <laughs> not to only make bad jokes but to laugh at them too. You know, same. Same. Me and you were like the same person, except you are a woman. Other than that, I'd probably wear that hat. <laughs> that was funny, right? She's always been special. Yeah, I've been called that. Keep your god up, Matt. Keep your guard up. Keep your guard up, Mayuri. I suspect this won't be a normal confer. I didn't even finish my sentence. Yeah, I, I intentionally didn't finish it. Electromagnetic wave. Uh, are we under attack? Are they trying to fry? Our, fry? Are they trying to fry our brains with electromagnetic? Mag <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second, guys. Hold on. With electromagnetic waves. Oh, shit. Dust falls from the ceiling as the floor shakes. 
We're definitely under attack. Is the organization like a militant group or something? What's going on? It's coming from above, but we're on the top floor. There's a roof, you know. All oh, that's above us. All oh, that's above us is the roof. Earth? An earthquake? Is it magnitude 2? What does magnitude mean again? You know, it's a measurement of the uh, intensity of the quake. It uh, increases by a factor of 2 every decimal point? Is that right? Oh, I might be wrong. Or is it a factor of 10 every whole number? No time to deal with Mayuri's confusion. Something's not right about this. I bolt out of the conference hall and run up the stairs to the roof, ignoring the no trespassing signs in my way. Yeah, you do that. Or so people don't jump off after listening to this crazy guy and his time travel shenanigans. Oh shit. Sparkles. The door is open. Upon closer inspection, a clock. Upon closer inspection, I realize that the lock has been broken. I open the door and see a billowing cloud of black smoke. You know, I see sparkles, not black smoke. There's some kind of phosphorescent dust sparkling in the air. An explosion. I can't believe it. Was there really an explosion? My heart is racing. Damn, I don't know what to do. Should I run away? This is the time when you just jump off the building. YOLO, am I right? <laughs> Fuck me, what is it, 2012? But why an explosion? Terrorists? Mm -hmm. No, that doesn't fit. Okay. I mean, how do you explain that? Oh shit, what up? What the? Looks like some sort of rocket type thing. A strange machine is sitting in the middle of the roof. Oh, is it a time machine? It's huge. It's huge. Maybe three meters tall and looks kind of like a satellite. Oh, yeah, those are solar panels. How did I... how did I miss those? <laughs> Could be. It's a big satellite, though. Did that thing cause the shaking just now? Maybe. Who put it here? Was it Dr. Nakabachi? Is this part of his presentation? You know, I didn't even see the doctor yet, so who knows? Possible. Even if that were the case, how the hell would he get it up here? Magic. He built it up here. My head is bursting with questions. As I search for the courage to approach the machine, a throng of reporters and building staff bursts onto the rooftop. They look just as confused as I am. Please, stay back, everybody. And then a woman, who I assume is a staff member, appears to wave us back. The press conference will proceed to schedule. Is she trying to hide something? Her response was unusually quick, almost like she's trying to keep me away from that device. Go touch it. Go touch the butt. <laughs> I've got a nose for conspiracies, and this stinks of a cover-up. What are they hiding? What was that explosion? I want to know, but I shouldn't risk getting any closer. As I turn in... <clears throat> I turn and leave. But not because I'm scared or anything like that. No. Blocka. Staff members lead us all, all of us back to the 8th floor. Mayuri is nowhere to be seen. She's not in the event hall either. She was the explosion. Surprise. I find her on the 7th floor. Oh, what are you doing down there? Got that little 
shop looking thing. Several caps and toy machines are lined up next to a plate reading birthplace of the Japanese PC. This is where Japanese Steve Jobs was born. Jesus. She's gazing upon them with a wistful look. Oh shit, phone. I breathe a sigh of relief and take out my phone. It's me. I've got a bad feeling about this. Something's happening. And I have no idea what it is. Yeah, I know. Don't worry. I won't do anything to jeopardize the mission, El Sai Kanguru. What is this? Why can't I hear the phone call? <laughs> After I speak the words and hang up, I'm able to wipe the sweat from my forehead. My sweat is cold. Ooh, cold sweat. That's not pleasant. Half of me hopes something will happen. The other half fears the same thing. Yeah, you're sort of in that kind of situation. I put away my phone and look back at Mayuri. She's still staring at those capsule toys. She doesn't seem to be worried about the explosion at all. I can't decide if she's level-headed or just air-headed. You know, there is a fine line. Mayuri, what are you doing? Well, I really want an Upa. Just as I thought. Oh, jeez. Those are slightly horrifying. <laughs> Mayuri points to a capsule machine. The signs on the front say, Rainet Kakele 3D character doll series. Rainet Kakele is a popular anime series with its own card game spin-off. Rainet Access Battlers. They even hold international tournaments. Is it Pokemans? Lupa is the serious mascot character. It resembles an elliptical egg with limbs sticking out like some kind of deformed dog. Oh. Oh. It's not Pokemans. what they call an ugly cute character. <laughs> uh, that burns deep. Burns deep into me. High school girls find these creatures adorable for some reason. Last year an ugly frog character was the rage. Its name escapes me though. Is it Dat Boy? Yeah, then go for it. I can't guarantee you'll get an Upa, though. I won't watch you get one first try. Mayuri gives me a troubled smile. But Mayushi's all out of 100 yen coins. Mayushi is what Mayuri calls herself sometimes. Okay. Thanks for speaking to yourself in a third-person-esque way. It's not like any of us do that or anything, right? <laughs> According to her, it's supposed to have a star at the end. Mayushi star. Oh, <laughs> uh, why? But who really cares? So, can I borrow 100 yen, please? I swear I say yes, right? She holds her hands out with a look like a begging puppy. Well, I, I can't just say no. Looks like she was planning this from the very beginning. I, I'm very easy to guilt into giving people stuff. <laughs> well, at least she didn't say gimme. Oh shit. <laughs> Do you think it's that easy, Mayuri? You'll get no money from me. Instead, I'll just show you how harsh life really is. 
Ring Taro, I thought we were thought we were on the same mind length here. Oh Jesus. I pull out a 100 yen coin, set it into the machine slot, and spin the lever. I'm not making that noise. I open the capsule and take out the contents. Mayuri leans forward eagerly to see what I got. It's an Upa, and it's metal, a metal Upa. Is it rare? Super rare. Well, watch me just be like a jackass and throw it away or something. While I examine the metal lupa, a boy who was watching us tries his luck on the same that I net machine. Oh, a normal lupa. Rip. You see, kid, that's called getting the short end of the stick. Happens to a lot of people. He looks at my metal lupa in resentment. I turn to see my every sparkling eyes fixed on the lupa. Hey, high school girl, you're acting like a little kid. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hmm, <laughs> I give this creature of metal to you, Mayuri. Your face is far too happy. Honestly, I don't want it. <laughs> really? Are you sure, Okarin? <laughs> the name is Kyoma. Kyoma. <laughs> Thank you, Okarin. <clears throat> Good throat clear. Rintaro. Good throat clear. Is she doing it on purpose? Yes. Yes, she is. That cut out really quick. Um, thank you for coming to Dr. Nakabachi's Time Machine press conference. I hear the announcement from the floor above. Sounds like they're starting. Oh well, shit, that zoom though. I head to the stairs. Surprise, it's over. That was the get out of my press conference <laughs> announcement. Oh shit, did I miss that? But my already doesn't follow. It was probably something about going up the stairs. Let's go, Mayuri. Mm, mm, oh. mm, just a sec, I gotta write my name. For what? She's preoccupied with the metal lupa. I'll go on ahead. You don't just leave your friend behind. Friend is probably in quotations here. I'm sensing something a bit more. I don't know though. I'm really bad at this. Oh shit, people are here. That presenter's really into it. <clears throat> Without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce the inventor, Dr. Nakabachi. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. I hope that picks up on the mic and doesn't sound really weird. Beat you to it. <laughs> Dr. Nakabachi enters to spare applause. Sparse applause. Not spare applause. He didn't want to stop it. He walks up to the podium. He's already wearing a frown. For some reason, I can feel his irritation from here. Dr. Nakabachi. I'm Dr. Nakabachi. Thank you all for coming. Sweet jacket. Jeez. 
It's like sparkle leather. Good job, man. Good job. It's also got a nice receding hairline, but <laughs> some pretty sweet eyebrows, but who am I to say that? Nakabachi takes the microphone and begins to speak, his voice brimming with confidence. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to begin with my theory of time travel, the greatest scientific breakthrough of the century. It would be. It would be. Time machine? Did he really build a time machine? Again, lady, you're really close to me. Can you, like, back up just three feet or so? I don't, I don't like it. Mayuri appears after writing her name on the middle Upa. She's a bit late, in more ways than one. What did she think a time machine presentation would be about? Eh, you know, potentially building a time machine, asking around for parts and ideas, and, you know, maybe a bit of donation money, support him on his Patreon account. It'll help, right? I take another look around the room. There are about 20 people now, including us, but still no media presence to speak of. I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There'd be 13 if it included us. Learn to count, nerd. So this is the extent of Dr. Nakabachi's frame. No one believes that he... Did I say frame? Of Dr. Nakabachi's fame. No one believes that he invented a time machine. I was interested in what he had to say, true, but my expectations were no higher than the rest of the onlookers. And a good thing they weren't. As he proceeds to explain his time machine design, my curiosity at language. My curiosity quickly turns to disappointment, then anger. Then anger leads to hatred. Hatred. <laughs> Yoda, please. Oh shit. Doctor. My roar silences Nakabachi and draws the eye of every person in the room. Do you take us for fools? <laughs> Who the hell are you? <laughs> who the hell am I? Someone who knows you for a fraud. That's who. You stole your theory from John Titer, and you call yourself an inventor? Oh shit. Someone throw this man out. <laughs> You're the one who we should throw out. Doctor, have you no shame? You have no right to call yourself an inventor. Shut your mouth, you little pest. Just then, someone grabs my arm from behind. Take a swing at him, take a swing at him, do it. Quite convinced it's an official here to throw me out, I turn around to glare him down. Unhand me, you! Huh? I would have punched a chick. Whoops. <laughs> you, you do not seem amused. You wanna... Your pants should probably be a little longer. They're, uh... You know, your, your, your coat stretches past them. It's a little odd. I don't know women's fashion, but that just seems a little off. It's a girl about my age. Oh shit. Her intense stare seems to challenge me, and I take a step back. Yeah, her gray sparkle eyes are pretty spooky. Her face looks somehow familiar. Where have I seen her before? Uh, oh. 
school? Ah. We haven't met, but I know her face. It's Makise Karisu. A few days ago, my friend Daru showed me a magazine article titled, Girl Genius Gives Lecture in Akihabara. Okay. The article was about a 17-year-old girl who had just graduated from an American university. Her thesis was even published in a major scientific journal. Oh, geez. Super genius here. Person that would have chose a black tie to go with that outfit, but, uh... <laughs> Ugh. Girl genius, Makise Karisu. I recognize the stubborn-looking girl from her photograph. Look at the... Look at this photograph. Ah, oh, Jesus. She's even wearing the exact same scowl. Yet... He's up there. Some people just have that face, you know? Some refer to it as re resting bitch face, but... <laughs> Take it easy on them, they don't choose that. <laughs> oh Jesus, you're too close too. <laughs> what business could such a genius have with me? <laughs> well, you know, you're trying to interrupt some potentially washed up inventor during his little conference with 13 people. <laughs> it's, it's something severe. She takes a quick look around the room, then turns back to me with a stern expression. Yeah, no shit, that's stern. I'm, I'm horrified. Could you come with me for a moment? What's with the attitude? She's obviously not staff, and there's no way that the, that the Makise Karisu would be working with somebody like Dr. Nakabachi. Which means... No! You're with the organization. Huh? <laughs> if their tendrils have gotten this far, then I've made a grave mistake. Stop fooling around and come with me. It's okay, guy. It's okay, she just wants to escort you out of the room and talk. Just go with her. My outburst has already attracted too much attention. I must flee! Out the window. Nakabachi, in particular, looks like he wants to rip my head off. It must be mortifying to be exposed as a fraud by a bright young man like myself. Doing the Lord's work here. Anyway, I mustn't draw any more attention to myself. If the organization gets wind of my presence here, it could endanger Mayuri. To say nothing of these ignorant civilians. I let Makise Kurisu lead me out of the assembly hall. Try anything and people are sure to notice. What will your superior say then? What are you on about? <laughs> she glares at me, quite fiercely at that. Attractive though she may be, there's no innocence in her eyes. Mm, fair enough, I guess. A beautiful agent, unmatched in cruelty. My heart beats in acceleration from the danger. Okay, so what's up with this guy? Is he like, is he mental? <laughs> like, like seriously. Looks like chaos really does get my blood pumping. <laughs> I just need to ask you something. What makes you think I'll answer? I know the, how the organization operates. What's with this organization stuff? Yeah, no kidding. Y you're yet to explain it, guy. Instead of answering, I take out my phone and put it to my ear. It's me. 
I've been caught by an organization agent. Yes, it's Makisa Griso. She's a dangerous one. No, it's fine. I'll find a way to. <laughs> yeah, she's had enough of your bullshit, guy. You, uh, <laughs> you should stop. Oh shit. <laughs> Carissa suddenly snatches the phone from my hand. What skill! I didn't have time to react. What are you doing? Huh? Your phone's off. <laughs> yeah, you, you caught me. <laughs> Just a guy trying to look like he's doing something in this world. Like somebody's calling me. Who are you talking to? My inner demons. Her eyes pierce deep into my soul. I quickly look away. She's good. Is she trying to attack my sense of identity in order to cause me a mental break? Recover. This isn't enough to sway me. <laughs> Your techniques don't work on me, but I'll tell you anyway. That's no ordinary phone. It's designed to deactivate the moment it leaves my hand. <laughs> she is not having your bullshit. Such measures are necessary to maintain secrecy. I know things that can get me killed. I quickly retrieve my phone and wipe the cold sweat off my forehead. Whew, that was close. So, so you talk to yourself. Shit, she's onto me. Gah! This is bad. Ordinary methods don't work on Makise Karisu, the genius girl. On the contrary, she's the one psyching me out. Damn, looks like I'll have to make a tactical retreat. If I can just find an opening. Just bolt it. Just book it down the... Oh shit. Back up, girl. Suddenly, Carissa steps up to me with a serious expression. She stares right at me, her huge eyes blazing with the strength of will. With the strength of... Strength of will. <clears throat> Words, am I right? Such fire. I can't look away. Could someone with such pure eyes really be an organization agent? What were you trying to tell me earlier? Well, you know, I was accusing you of having no innocence in your eyes, and now they are awfully pure. Now that you've stepped, you know, a foot from my face, you know, I look quite beautiful. Um, I don't know what I was doing earlier, and I would like to apologize for that. Earlier? What are you talking about? About... About 15 minutes ago, before the conference started. Well, I'll be checking that in post, lady. Nonsense. This is the first time we've met. I was with Mayuri and that Uba toy 15 minutes ago. You were... Oh. You were trying to tell me something, right? You looked really upset. Is this a trap? It does seem like one of the organization's dirty tricks. But would this girl do something like that underhanded? You looked like you were going to start crying any second. Oh, that's just my face, lady. <laughs> Why? Have we met before? Uh, I saw you in a magazine. She seems sincere. Y your tie is also sort of bleeding onto your shirt. I uh, don't want to point that out to you, though. That makes her even more suspicious. That's right. Don't let her beauty fool you. She's a cold, calculating secret agent. 
If I show the slightest vulnerability, I'm done for. And how do you know my name? My knowledge has no limits. Rintaro, please. You're making an ass of yourself. I am a mad scientist, after all. That's not really something you admit, you know? <laughs> Genius girl, our next meeting shall be as enemies. Huh? Huh? Yeah, I'd be weirded out too by him. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs> I spin around and take off down the stairs, ignoring her call to stop, like I'd listened to the enemy. Oh shit, I made it all the way to floor four. Damn the organization, they must be serious if they're sending in agents like her. I run all the way down to the fourth floor and check behind me. Once I'm convinced Makise Karisu's not tailing me, I sigh while rubbing my temples. I get quite the headache. But I can't let them capture me yet. Well then, what do I do now? My mission was to attend the conference and evaluate Dr. Nakabachi's research. Now that I know he's a fraud, there's no real point in going back. I guess I'll just go home. But wait, aren't I forgetting something important? Your dopey girlfriend who is obsessed with the Pokemans, I believe? Let's see now, what is it? Damn, I left Mayuri behind. Yeah, you did. I knew she'd be a liability. I shouldn't have brought her along. I was trying to prioritize her safety, but got careless. Watch her, like, actually be dead now. I'll try calling her first. If she's alright, then I could just have her meet me here. Oh shit, my phone actually works. With that thought in mind, I take out my phone. I turn it on. And it rings, just as I do. Hmm? Medical? Hmm? And email. It's not just a regular email, there's a video attached. Do not open these. No. <laughs> and it's from an unknown address. This is gonna blow up your goddamn phone. It's gonna be like a note going off in a plane. It's gonna be bad, alright. There's gonna be fire. The whole fourth floor is gonna go up. It's awful. I open the video file with some trepidation. Yeah, no shit. Hmm. It's gonna jump scare the hell out of me, isn't it? Hmm. There's nothing but noise. Is this a prank? It's just a prank, bro! Or some sort of Makise Kurisu style attack. Maybe the noise is some sort of make people go crazy frequency. You know, I think you're already tuned into that frequency, buddy. No, wait, I don't remember giving her my mail address, so I'm probably just thinking too hard. I curse myself for being gullible enough to play the video. I have more pressing matters to deal with anyway. Yeah, you call Mayuri. I stop the video and call Mayuri's phone from my address book. <coughs> Mayuri? Damn it, my idiot. Why won't you pick up? Looks like I'll have to go back to the assembly hall. But things will get messy if I bump heads with Makise Kurisu again. Wait, don't tell me. Did that femme fatale kidnap Mayuri? Oh, no. 
Damn you! Is that how the organization operates? Leaving without Mayuri isn't an option. Call me overprotective, but she's like a little sister to me. And that's... there's a very real danger that she might wander off somewhere the moment I let her out of my sight. Mayuri has always been like that. I never know if she'll be there when I turn to look. In a sense, that's why I've become Gyoma. I'll figure out how to pronounce that first name. I have to go back for her. The thought of climbing back up to the 8th floor is depressing, but I have no choice. Oh, geez, another floor. Four flights of stairs. When I get back to the assembly hall, Dr. Nakabachi's conference is just finished. Nobody is on stage, and the phony inventors already left. The 20 or so members of the audience are starting to pack up. Uh, 13, I believe I called it. I soon find Mayuri. She's in the corner, looking lost. Well, at least she wasn't kidnapped. Even better, I don't say Makise Kurisu anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I scared her off. So be it. I'll let her go this time. Still, I keep my eyes peeled as I run up to Mayuri. Mayuri? Mayuri, why didn't you pick up? We're leaving. Oh, Kairi and my metal Upa ran away. They could move? She turns to me with a forlorn expression. Yeah, no shit, that's a forlorn expression. Ran away? What? It's alive? That's a little hard to believe. Don't crush this girl's dreams. I think I dropped it. It's on the roof, probably. Didn't you go up there, too? I see, so she was looking for it. Not like it really matters. Forget about it. You can always get another one. Oh, shit. That's, uh, quite the uh, upturn of profit. No way, Metalupas sell upward of 10,000 yen online, you know? So what is that, like... A hundred dollars? No! Wait, what? <laughs> that toy was worth that much? And you got it for, like, a buck? <laughs> That's, uh, quite a hundred times profit. Think, Mayuri, where did you drop it? I don't know, that's why I'm looking, and even if we find it, you can't sell it, okay? <laughs> that 10,000 yen will fund my research. What a bastard. I said you can't sell it. It even has Mayushi's name on it. Thus begins our search for the metal Upa. <laughs> I cannot make those noises. That tutere or whatever it was? No. Upa Upa, come out, come out wherever you are. Mayuri tries calling its name. I don't know if she truly expects a response. By the way, tutere is Mayuri's catchphrase. It means, actually, I've never actually bothered to ask what it means. Anyway, the metal Upa is nowhere to be found. Maybe she didn't drop it in the assembly hall, but on the seventh floor, landing near the capsule toy machines. Another possibility is that someone with an eye for rare items pilfered it. What a shitlord. 
Just imagining the smug grin on that person's face makes me writhe with nen- in envy. What kind of man steals a helpless girl's toy? Is there nothing in his heart but the lust for money? Sounds like you, Okari. <laughs> you got me. Whoa, wasn't expecting that from Mayuri. Shots fired. Calm down, girl. At least you're like a respectable distance away from me now, though. Somebody just died. What? What was that? Is that a scream? Yeah, I think so. Only the presenter and a few other people are left in the assembly hall. Including Mayuri and me, and less than half the audience remains. Everyone looks at each other anxiously, startled by the scream. It was a man jumping off the roof, it has to be. Even I cannot suppress a shiver. First the explosion on the roof, now this? What's going on here? Mayuri squeezes my hand tight. Mayuri, here. Stay here, Mayuri. I take a deep breath, prepare myself, and head in the direction of the scream. The echoes lead me down a dark, empty hallway on the same floor. I'm pretty sure I came from around that corner. I crouch down and turn the corner slowly, keeping my eyes and ears peeled for any sign of danger. And there, at the end of the passage, I see it. The metal upa taking a man's life with its bare hands. There's something on the ground. No, someone. Motionless. Who is it? The clothes are familiar. Oh man, is it the sweet styling jacket? It can't be. <laughs> what? Makise Karisu. Her face is turned away, but I know it's her. The impertinent genius girl I fought with ten minutes ago. Is now face down in a pool of bright red blood. Holy shit. She's dead. <laughs> mm. <laughs> No. B but why? Suddenly I realize that I'm shaking. I want to run, run away. I shouldn't have come. This is wrong. Ugh. Someone killed Makise Karisu. There's no other explanation. Who would do such a thing? There's no one else here. <laughs> <laughs> I twist around in shock. Some other men have followed me. And every one of them is ghastly pale. They must have seen the body. Call the police. A man cries out in panic. At this, everyone starts screaming and running away. I follow them, of course. There's absolutely no reason to stay here. Concern for Makise Karisu is superseded by my instinctive urge to flee. When I get back to the assembly hall, Mayuri is waiting for me with tears in her eyes. Okari, what happened, Okari? We gotta go, girl. D We're leaving. I grab Mayuri's hand and run. Maybe he isn't insane. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh man. I race down the stairs trying to drive the image of Grisa's dead body from my mind. But I can't. Ugh. The redness of her blood has burned into my mind more than the sight of the body itself. Ow, my eyes. That was my first time seeing a dead body. Is this what it's like? When I realized that she was dead, I felt chilling terror and a surge of nausea. 
But that was all I felt. Fear and disgust. Shouldn't there be something more? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't really have too much of a personal connection. I guess I just didn't know her that well. <laughs> I finally stop once we get out to the main street. Jewel Dory. My chest pounds, my breathing labored from running down the stairs at full speed. Don't do that, it's dangerous. Hey, well, hey, what happened? You look really pale. Girl, that's just my skin color. Mayuri doesn't seem to comprehend the situation. I guess it's because she didn't see the body. She's not even breathing hard. She looks slow. But she's actually pretty fast on her feet. What's that supposed to mean? Huh? <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? S someone died. Huh? I take several deep breaths. The color of that blood still stains my brain. Much like it will stain that floor. But I've calmed down a bit. Makise Kurisu is dead. And I don't know who the killer is. Sirens in the distance. I guess an ambulance will be here soon. Hopefully the cops. Then the police will arrive and this area will become a crime scene. But for now, the crowds milling around through Akihabara have no idea what has happened. Everyone is going about their business as usual, the never-ending search for electronics, moe, and porn. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Akihabara is, uh, it's quite the place like that. Just another day in Akihabara. I take my phone out of my pocket, perhaps out of reflex. I'm not sure what I plan to do with it. Oh, I know, my friend Daru. I'll tell him what happened just now, since he knows about Makise Karisu. Makise. I suppose it might be disrespectful to the victim. But my adrenaline is pumping, I can't make calm decisions after witnessing something like that firsthand. Call him. That's how humans are, after all. We're not as special as we like to believe. At the end of the day, we're nothing but dirty, slime like flesh. Thanks, man. I needed that to end my day. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> it's getting late. Um, we'll find a good stopping place. Our souls fester like semen left to rot in the... <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, we're, we're stopping there. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> and, um... I'll figure out how to save. Uh, how do I? How, how, do I, how do I save? Shift. Oh, shift is. Oh, I could have taken a good screenshot. Um, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna call that episode there. Um, that wasn't exactly a good image to end it on, but you know what? Since I'm ending it on this, you guys have to end it on this too. So I'll see you next time.